Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to go over how to make your own soft plastic Cinco's um, using aluminum injection molds and the equipment you'll need to do it. Alright, so to get started, the basics that you're going to need um, one, you're going to need a mold, whether it be a plaster of Paris mold or an aluminum mold, but today we're going to do aluminum molds. This is a 5 inch Yamamoto Cinco mold, it's 4 cavity. Then a stirring tool, I like to use metal, um, so I chose a butter knife. Um, you can use popsicle sticks or tongue depressors, but they introduce air into the plastic and you don't want that. Then you're going to need some sort of plastisol, whether it be a gallon jug or a one quart jug. I buy all my stuff from Do It Molds. Um, some of my colorants and glitters are mix and match from different companies, but plastic and molds, I buy exclusively from Do It Molds. Then you're going to need a clamp, whether it be <clears throat> a C clamp or a quick grip like this. Then you're going to need the injector. They make three sizes. Um, they have a small, a medium, and a large. The large would be the best way to go, but the injectors are kind of pricey. Um, so I went with the medium. It's not too bad. It does the job. And you're also going to need Pyrex. Now I suggest you do not go cheap on Pyrex. Um, don't go buy an off name brand. Um, you're gonna want a high quality glass measuring device. Um, glass, the, the Pyrex glass can withstand the heat that you're gonna put it through. It needs to get up to 300, the plastic needs to get up to 350 degrees. The Pyrex will not break under that pressure. Many of the others will. So, first thing you wanna do is make sure you give the plastic is a good stir if you haven't used it in a while. I've been pouring plastics today, so we're going to start with just one cup. And you'll notice if you've never used Plastisol before, it's white when you first pour it out and it's really thin. So what we're going to do is take it from the liquid state turn it into a gel almost actually it will be a gel and then it'll go back to the a clear um, liquid state just like this so depending on your microwave um, the general rule of thumb is <clears throat> 30 seconds stir, 30 seconds stir, 30 seconds stir. If you have a little more of a lightweight microwave like I have, I usually start with one minute. Sometimes I'll go one minute stir, one minute stir, and then the 30 seconds. But if you have a more high power microwave, I would suggest only doing 30 seconds. Still pretty liquid here, so I'm going to go for another minute. One thing you can do while you're waiting and heating your plastic is get your colors and glitters ready. Um, today I have a green pumpkin from Bait Junkies, and then I have a black glitter and a silver glitter. And make sure they're high temp. Don't go to Walmart and buy just any old glitter. That glitter will melt under the plastic. It'll cause discoloration in your, in your baits. Um, it'll, or it'll clump together. It won't mix in right. It needs to be the high temp glitter. Okay, so we're st starting to uh, go to the solid state here. You can kind of see it's not so running you still want to make sure you give it a good stir make sure there's no hot spots you don't want to be burning your plastic I've already gone for two minutes so from here on out I go 30 seconds stir 30 seconds stir Thank you. 
Yeah. All right, so now we're starting to turn to a gel. So you can see it's starting to go clear. And we get really thick now, um, almost like kind of like a glue. Notice how it's not really dripping. This is where it starts to turn over. So you really got to give it a good stir. Um, yeah, it's no longer runny as you can tell. So we're halfway there. Make sure you stir, get the stuff off the sides as much as you can. Because once it goes to the goes back to the liquid form, um, you won't want to stir the sides anymore. And again, have your stuff ready to go. Um, one thing you can do, again while you're waiting. I'm not going to pour a Canning Creek today because I'm doing Cinco's. Um, get your clamp ready. Now the nice thing with aluminum molds is you don't need a mold release. You can use worm oil if you'd like. It helps give them a, uh, I don't know, more of a smooth finish I guess. But with aluminum molds, as you'll see as we go, there's not really a worry about that. Still not quite there. That's what we want. You can see it's starting to turn back to a liquid. You can see how it's starting to run again. That's what we want. Now on some of the other how-to videos you'll see on YouTube, a lot of people start adding their colorant right now. I don't like to do that. I, I like to get it back to the, fully back to the liquid state before I add the colorant. And that's mainly for vibrance. Um, it seems to me that the color holds better, looks better, um, as you can see by some of these other ones. How the color stays vibrant and shiny. Um, it's just personal preference, it's up to you. Okay, so now we can add some coloring. Um, when you get these colors, you want to add a couple screws or nuts to them. That'll really help when you got to stir them up, keep them mixed up. Your colorants will separate. Um, and you can kind of see there, at least I think you can, how it separates. The colorant sinks to the bottom. I'm not sure if that's showing up well. But you put a couple screws in there. And you can see how it really kind of mixes everything up with just a couple shakes. So. Now, depending how dark you want it, you can go just a couple drops, and it'll still be really translucent. But I want a solid. So we're going to go like that. Um, a little bit goes a long way with this stuff. Just depends, like I said, how dark you want it. Now going forward, you're not going to want to stir the sides because the stuff on the sides is already cooled. A lot cooler than what's down at the bottom. 
Now make sure you sharpen up on your eyeballing skills. If you don't have decent eyeballing skills, you want to get like a teaspoon and measure this out. Um, but if you have good eyeball skills, you can just eyeball it. We're just going with silver and black. Ooh, a little too much. That's okay. And just give it a good stir. This just want to make sure there's no clumps of glitter. Make sure it's not extremely stuck to the side. Another thing I also add is the scent. Um, this is called hog sauce from Upper Hand Scents, which I can get through Do It Molds. And you only need four to six drops. You don't need a whole lot. All, your, all this does, it adds a little scent for the fish, but it also takes the plastic smell out of the bait. And again, if you're not in a properly ventilated area, you're really going to smell it. Now we just want to heat it up. Get it back up to 350 degrees. While you're getting it there, make sure your uh, molds are clamped, your injector is ready to go. Now you're basically just stirring the glitter up on this last time. Make sure it's to the temp you want. And actually make sure it's good to go. Now you can either draw it up into the plunger or pour it in. I like to pour it in just because it puts all the air bubbles at the top of the plunger and not at the bottom, which means the air will be the last thing to go in. Give this a little squirt to get any air that's at the front out. And straight into your mold. I'll keep a little pressure on it for about 15-20 seconds afterwards. It'll help get the air out. And you're going to want to top this off. Squeeze the tip out. Push your spew ball, that's what I call it. It's basically the plastic you didn't use. Now you'll notice that that's starting to suck in already. You're going to want to pour <coughs> a little plastic on top. Pull this little piece out of there. Again, be extremely careful. You might not want to do some of the things like I just did by pulling that plastic out of there. But you want to keep that topped off until it holds. Because if that starts to restrict down in, it's going to pull air in. So if there's not enough plastic, you're going to get air at, the, at this end of the bait. You don't want that. One thing you want to have ready to go once you've got your plastic poured is a nice clean bowl of cool water. Because you're going to want to take your Cinco's out of the mold and straight into the water. Alright, so what we're looking for is for that right there to kind of pull in a little bit. Once it pulls in a little bit, then we know our plastic is cooled. If you're not sure, give it 10 minutes. Set a timer, look at the clock. Give it at least 10 minutes if you're not sure what to look for. Okay, so now you can see how that started to sink in a little bit right there. So we can go ahead and remove our clamp. This is what you want to look for is what side of the mold they stuck to because they're gonna they're gonna stick to one side or the other. 
Make sure you let them fall down to one side. And that's what you get. Four sinkholes. All uniform. As long as you heat your plastic right. And take the steps I've described. Now you're ready to cut. You'll have this little extra piece. Save that for later. If you get little pieces like that, just pull them. They come right off into the water. You can give them a squeeze just to make sure there's no air pockets. If you have air pockets, you're going to want to repour them because they won't swim right, they won't lay on the bottom right, they won't wacky rig right. But then you go straight into the water. So, for those of you looking to pour your own sinkos, I hope this was helpful. Hope it answers some questions you might have. If it didn't, leave a comment below. I'll do my best to get back to you. Um, also, leave suggestions for any other videos you might want to see. Um, I have plans for other videos coming up. There'll be some videos with me on the kayak um, showing how the baits work and also some other how-to videos on some other kayak gear, fishing gear, and stay tuned. Make sure you click the subscribe button up above, hit the like button or dislike button, whichever way you feel about this video, and stay tuned. Definitely more videos to come. Thanks for watching.